every year scientists make incredible discoveries, some of which even baffle our world's greatest minds. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll take a look at nature to discover the hidden facts. There's life in one of the hottest and most contaminated places on Earth. What do you get when you combine boiling water, high salt content, acidic heavy metals, and a pH of zero? The Dalol Geothermal Area Known for its vast, color-changing pools and strange, stalagmite-like formations, the Dalol Geothermal Area is beautiful and deadly. And despite the harsh environment, Scientists have recently discovered that it may contain and sustain some form of life. Life can even be found in the most dismal conditions. The Dalol geothermal area is located in Ethiopia and is sometimes referred to as hell on earth. The organisms that live in these conditions are called nanohaloarchaea, and they can be found in other environments with extremely high salt content. Scientists recently discovered them on rock samples taken from the area. But why did scientists even go looking for life in the Dalol geothermal area? The answer lies in the age-old question, is there really life on Mars? The conditions of the Dalol geothermal area are abysmal, but scientists believe that because they were able to find life in such abysmal conditions, that they may be able to better locate life on Mars. First, they needed to find out what kind of organisms thrive in these types of conditions. This lets the scientists know exactly what kind of technology they need to use in order to detect the specific life forms. Now that they know the nanohaloarchaea can be found, they have a better understanding of what exact type of detection equipment to use when combing through the planet Mars. Now that scientists have a better understanding of the kind of organisms that are present in harsh conditions and what kind of technological equipment they need to use to find them, they can send a rover with the correct equipment to search around Mars. The Dalol geothermal area is not a new formation, so why have we not studied it before now? The field lies in a politically unstable region of Ethiopia and is not safe to travel to until recently. One question that researchers have is, does it hold the key to unlocking the secret of sustaining life on Mars? One day soon, scientists may know the answer, but the discovery and accessibility of the Dalol geothermal area is crucial to answering some of science's oldest questions. Rio Tinto River, Spain Another interesting landmark that scientists are currently studying is that of the Red River. The Rio Tinto, which directly translates to Red River, is a 100-kilometer stretch of river in Spain which is known for its characteristic red water. It also has been called the Blood River by tourists. But what gave this river its characteristic red water? Some speculate that excessive mining of metals on the riverbank is what caused it to run permanently red. Minerals such as copper and iron were extracted 3,000 years ago, and these minerals, combined with the high acidity of the water, cause the metals to oxidize and turn the water bright red. So how does this river simulate life on Mars? Like the Delong geothermal area, its extreme conditions, such as high acidity and heat, create the perfect conditions for scientists to study what kind of life Mars can sustain. Similar to the type of organism that lives in the Delong geothermal area, the microorganisms that live in the Rio Tinto are also very simple, non-metabolic organisms that love sulfides. The high iron, potassium and jarosite content around the river is similar to the makeup of minerals on the planet Mars. It is safe to say that if there is or was life on Mars, it would be comparable to or the same as the life found in the Rio Tinto. Recently, the old and long-abandoned mine that sits upstream has been accused of poisoning a nearby town. Landowners in Bougainville are calling for justice and for the previous owners of the mine to come back and clean up their mess. They state that the deterioration of the mine has caused their water to become poisoned with copper and their homes to be filled with dust. As of right now, though, there's no word on how the surrounding towns will get justice for the damages caused by the abandoned mine. While the Rio Tinto is open to visitors, there is no swimming allowed. 
Due to the acidity of the river, it can be incredibly dangerous to dip your toes in. Boiling Lake, Dominica A short eight-mile hike through Dominica's forests will take you to a natural phenomenon located in Monatrapiton National Park, a World Heritage Site on the island of Dominica. Tourists are advised to bring a guide along to find the boiling lake. Though the trails are well-worn and easily marked, an all-day hike is not something that foreigners should take on alone. The experienced guides will not only get you to and from the lake as quickly as possible, but they also know the most scenic places to stop and rest along the way. It is caused by what is believed to be a flooded fumarole and is the second largest hot spring lake in the world. The blue-gray lake gets its name from the 180 to 197 Fahrenheit temperatures of its water, which is believed to be caused by a crack in the bottom of the basin that allows for molten lava from a nearby volcano to seep in. There is no swimming allowed here. Even though temperatures of the lake are not always at a boiling point, there is no telling when the molten lava will slip through and heat up the entire lake. Though there is no swimming in the lake, in 2007, an adventurer by the name of George Karunas filmed himself crossing the lake from above, suspended by ropes over the violently boiling lake for a TV series known as Angry Planet. George daringly held a mesh bag full of raw eggs over the boiling lake and dipped them in to cook for lunch. Scientists have reported that the lake has gone through a phase of cooling, drying out almost completely and then boiling again. No one has ever recorded nor witnessed this change as it happens, and no one knows how suddenly or gradually these changes in the lake take place. The island of Dominica is known amongst tourists as the Nature Island and is a hotspot for tourism. So, is there really life on Mars? The answer may have been in our own backyard the whole time. We now know from studying the Dalol geothermal area and the Rio Tinto that microorganisms can live in some of the harshest, most extreme environments known to Earth. But what do you make of these three phenomena? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.